Good morning, afternoon, and evening, everyone. This is Kip Tesla, and welcome to Radical Dreamers, the unstolen jewel. We're just gonna call it that. How have you been? It's been a while. We haven't done a stream in over two weeks. How's everyone doing? Hey, sis, how are you? What are you up to? I know you've been waiting for this for a while. I'm waiting for this as well. This is the first time I'm playing this. It's I don't even know where to begin. So, Radical dream Dreamers, the jewel that cannot be stolen. Le <laughs> Trésor, I forgot the, the word, uh, is a side story to Chrono Trigger, which came out on Super Nintendo Satellaview, well, Super Famicom in Japan, Satellaview, which was a satellite-based down game, video game download system exclusive to Japan, and it never came out anywhere else until today oh my god what is that <laughs> let's twist again indeed sis thank you thank you for resubscribing my sister <laughs> i can actually say that with uh, and and it's tr and it's the truth i'm not saying that dirty is not our sister which is just not we just don't share the parents <laughs> but uh what was i saying yeah so it came out only in Japan as a sequel side story to Chrono Trigger, and I read about it for years. Uh, it's the first time ever going to play it. I've been waiting for this for a long time. And if you've ever seen any of my streams, you probably know that Chrono Cross, that the sequel to Chrono Trigger, is my favorite game of all time. Well, this game was a huge basis. This game's story serves as a huge basis of the story of Chrono Trigger. And it was explained by the developers as, um, well, being basically the same shit only set in a parallel uh, dimension, parallel universe, which, well, Chrono Cross deals with the theme of parallel universes, which we'll come to once we finish this, but uh, this is like another timeline where this is happening. And it's set in the world of uh, Chrono Trigger, the same planet, same everything. It's not, not much going to make sense. Well, I don't even know the story of this game, uh, but f I know there's some uh, locations are the same. I know I've just heard some music is the same as in Crown Cross, like Gale, the the battle um, theme. So God knows what else. Uh, see, I can see that the soundtrack has only 15 tracks, which isn't much compared to humongous number of uh, Chrono Cross tracks, which is something around 100. But we'll see. I don't know. I don't know what to expect. I know there's going to be a lot of reading. John, my friend John, told me there's going to be shit, shit ton of reading, dude. <laughs> so I know that's going to be there. Um, I know the main, the characters are the same. Well, at least the main characters, uh, Kid and Serge, are there. And I think Sasha's just done. Well, I've been dragging a bit uh, the, the start just a bit so she can be here as well. She had a class. Let me just open the door for her. Coming. I'll be right back. Welcome. All right. Okay. So that's about it. And yeah, as for as for the reading bit, sister, uh, there's gonna be a lot of reading in this. Don't worry. I'm gonna. All I'm gonna do in this game is read. From what I understand, it's a visual novel game. I've never played any of those except uh, snippets of Sun Hill visual novel, whatever it was called on the Game Boy Advance. So. Don't worry, it's gonna be a shit ton of reading. So let's go, let's let's go. We'll keep him keep his name Serge Sir Serge Serge. Aquel Aquel Folly. <laughs> That's what I think of. Okay, here we go. <laughs> it's just so the the sounds from the room wouldn't go wouldn't interfere with her class and the, that her Norwegian which speak wouldn't interfere with the stream. <laughs> the old lady's tip-off was right on the money. The counterspell on the barrier around the outer walls could have done a real number on us. Kid's plain, unadorned braid flicked back and forth across her shoulders as she walked. She's already there. We picked our way through the elaborate lattice of the manor's Magic shields moving in closer and closer to Lord Lynx's stronghold. There were three of us. Kid, Magil, and me. Oh, 
they're going straight for links. Isn't that interesting? People who played Chrono Cross, well, people who played this game will know, but people who played Chrono Cross already recognize these characters. I guess it must have been three years already since I first met Kid. Back then, I was just a wandering musician, traveling wherever my feet would take me, and wherever a few tunes would pay for a warm bed. It was in the Outlands, in a town called Rigiora, Rigiora, Rigi, Rigi, Rigiora, where we first ran across one another. And since then, she dragged me along on a whole bunch of adventures. And misadventures, too. Ah, kid. She was a thief. And not just any thief. Just a few months shy of 17 and already renowned as one of the realm's greatest. What, thieves? What's more, she was achingly beautiful, stylish and joy to be around. And a dab hand at campsite cooking. Or so she liked to claim. Oh, now we have that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the truth was a little different. Those bandits with hearts of gold you've heard about in the stories? The ones who steal from the rich to give to the poor? Yeah, that wasn't kid's style. She was short-tempered, prone to lying, bossy and obsessed with money. And rarely did she care to listen to a single word anyone said to her. But she wasn't all bad. <laughs> Probably. Maybe. Sometimes? She had her moments anyway. <laughs> I like this already. I glanced over my shoulder to see a shadow hovering behind us, blending into the darkness like smoke. Magil. Or Magil? I'm gonna go Magil, because I think that's their version of Gil. Also known as Magil the Shade. He was Kid's partner, but even after three years, I still knew hardly anything about him. All I knew was that he was around 30 years old and not much of a talker. But he was one heck of a mage. I heard that he and Kid had started working together way before I met her. He always covered up the top half of his face with a mask. And I've never, I've never seen what he looked like underneath. Wait, are you telling me for three years you haven't seen the guy's face? Does he shower? Does they, they, he? They're telling you that he became a mage in thirty years. That's like so wonderful. Before thirty years, yeah. he's around thirty years old. Jesus Christ, man! Just wash your face sometime. Maybe it's a magical mask. Who knows? He was a man so mysterious that it sometimes seemed like he was an interloper from another world. Ha ha ha. Ha <laughs> ha! It wasn't like Kid was exactly big on details about her past, but Magil? He might as well not have had one. And Kid didn't seem to know much about her partner in crime either. What kind of man he was, what kind of life he'd lived before, nothing. You might ask how exactly I wound up being a part of this merry band. Well, it's complicated. Yes, love? I just wanted to say if he's a bear or something, because he's dirty and he's just a bit shy of seven. There you go now. Sasha. Yeah, I, I guess I'm Serge. He'll search the main guy in Chrono Cross as well, so it would make sense that this is uh this takes place in a parallel dimension to Chrono Cross. But we'll see. Like I said, this is totally new to me as well. As you can see, the <laughs> first first time ever we actually using the the blind playthrough. No, neither of us it just came out out of Japan. I mean, for the first time ever. I knew there was a fan translation that you could play on the emulators. I knew that since I played first Chrono Trigger like some 12, 13 years ago, but I never tried it. I saw some screenshots, I've seen this image around the internet, but that's all I've seen, and she didn't even see that much. So this is the first time this game has ever been released outside of Japan, since 1996, when it originally came out. That's what I was talking about uh, at the start. It came out like in 1996 on Super Nintendo's Super Famicom's um, Satellaview service, which was way ahead of its time, and I can't imagine that existed in 1996. It was basically satellite service for playing games you, like at a certain time they're like we're broadcasting this game right now if you want to play it and then you download it to your super nintendo super famicom cart and then you play it there were some games that were event based i know there's a zelda two zelda games that were that came out via Satellaview. one was a remake of the first zelda and the other one was kind of a weird side story to a link to the past 
uh, and you had like a narrator and you had to be like it starts at 6 p.m you boot up your nintendo you're there at 6 p.m and you're i guess listening from this is all i never seen this i'm just talking from what i read you know so i guess you listen to this narrator and get audio hints and that's how you play the game this game worked differently i think it was just a game you download so imagine downloading anything in 1996 imagine having a computer in 1996 you know and uh and that's that's the reason i think that's the reason why it was never released outside japan also i don't think the the west was big on these this kind of game like visual novels right it's more of a it, you know eastern thing asian japanese thing so you know no wonder it's still a different genre of game from cr both chrono trigger and chrono cross all right uh, look at that water effect, though. Yeah. Wonderful. This was Super Nintendo, guys. Just blows my mind. <laughs> yeah. Okay. A. I guess you could say that life doesn't always turn out the way you think it will. Kid, who was heading up our little raiding party, suddenly stopped dead. Look lively, boys. We got... Oh, wait. She's, she's a girl. Look lively. No, I can't give her that voice. I'm just get, gonna go a look, uh, look and marl with her. Or maybe a little thinner. Look lively, boys, we've got company. We glance around warily as cold, cruel eyes emerge from the darkness. Ooh, nice image. Ooh. I heard a low <laughs> I heard a low growl. Dark shadows prowled through the night surrounding us. A pack of wildcats. Meow. There must have been about ten of them. A thrill of fear ran down my spine. Flustered, I pulled my knife from my belt. See, I don't remember Serge ever carrying a knife. He carried a swallow, <laughs> a double-edged sword or thingy. Knives were kids' thing in Chrono Cross. Kid calmly shifted into the into a fighting stance. Watch yourselves. I don't reckon these buggers have been treated for rabies. Oh my god, she has the same accent as in Chrono Cross. It's the same character. The wildcats snarled and growled as they slowly closed in on us, drawing the noose tighter and tighter. Their eyes glinted in the darkness like fireflies, and strings of eager spittle dripped wetly onto to the ground. Oh, they're <laughs> drooling, okay. Then one of them sent an almighty roar soaring to the moon, and the hunt was on. <laughs> there it is, Gale! It's a track we're gonna listen a lot to in, the, in Chrono Cross, this is the main battle team. Oh my god! I had to think fast. Kid dived into the thick pack of wild king, gave the largest of their number on Almighty King from the Chop. So I actually had to choose an action because I was talking, it just happened. The startled beast gave away, gave a yelp as it was sent flying. I turned to my right to see that a nearby wildcat was charging toward me, its head lowered menacingly. Panicked, I tried to make a last second dodge, but I wasn't quite fast enough. Its claws scraped against my side and it rushed past me. As it, thank you. Mm. I winced in pain for a moment, then turned to face my foe and readied myself. So you gotta... I ran away. <laughs> I tried to use magic. Hell yeah. But I didn't know any spells. Why did I try that then? <laughs> a wildcat lunged at me, its jaws agape. Well, this started badly already. <laughs> ah! By few reflex, I shielded my face with my arm. An intense pain shot through me from wrist to shoulder. The wildcat tried to sink its fangs in deeper, but its grip was poor. It sh I shook it off and gave it a kick for good measure, sending it running back into the pack. Good enough? <laughs> Surge, behind you! Panicked by Kid's warning, I whirled wildly around and came face to face with a pair of eyes blazing like hellfire. Attack, or oh, a fucking attack this time. The wildcat was coming right at me. By reflex, I ducked, its attack swiping through the air directly over my head. I felt its hot breath on my cheek as it flew by me. Urgh. At the same time, I thrust my knife upward, plunging it into the beast's belly. With a horrible cry of agony, the wildcat crashed face first into the ground. Yes, it's this kind of story you make. Remember, we talked about this when you sent me the Sheldon playing. Uh, a text adventure game from the 80s. <laughs> That's how we came upon that. But I lost my balance in the chaos and fell down a heap as well. Fell down in a heap as well. 
I rolled over and was only just able to stagger back to my feet before readying myself for my next opponent. Yep, <laughs> that. So, from what I understand, like, if I chose different options, we would have totally different dialogue. So it's like a book that adapts to your choices. I like that. It's the precursor to Telltale games. I was breathing heavily. The handle of my knife was slick with sweat and I tightened my grip. With a kick like a bolt of lightning, Kid landed a clean hit on the flank of a nearby wildcat. It staggered before losing its footing, letting out a pathetic cry. But Kid had already moved in to finish it off. And then, the roar of fire. A burning smell filled my nostrils, and next to me, a shrill screech pe pierced the air. Magal's fire spell engulfed the head of a nearby wildcat. Ooh. It fled, darting off into the darkness like an arrow. Did we win? I guess we did win. <laughs> I scanned the air. Oh, wait. Uh, it said in the, uh, in the instruction why. No, oh, it doesn't work. I scanned the area. Only moments ago we had been surrounded, but now there wasn't a single wildcat left. Kid and Magal had either sent the rest off with their tails between their legs or put put paid to them once and for all. What's put paid? I guess just fucked them up, but I've never heard that expression. Ha! Ye dreaming if you think a pack of flea-bitten moggies is gonna stop us, Lynx. Kid crossed her arms and flashed a triumphant grin. Meanwhile, I was panting heavily and, I, and it felt like my legs were about to give out from under me. I collapsed to my knees, overwhelmed, overwhelmed by what I'd just been through. Put paid to stop abruptly or destroy. Well, yeah, they fucked them up. Huh? Plain English. Oh, there we go. Oh, you can go surround. That's interesting, but let's keep it in stereo. That's how it was in the original. Save. There we go. And you can end the game with the click phew I'd taken a few hits but I was fine otherwise a couple of scars to talk about later maybe scars of time <laughs> but nothing that would stop me carrying on are you hurt Magal looked down at me his face expressionless as ever no worries Mag oh no worries Mag he'll be right said kid bragging Barging in to get a better look at me. He may be a whining... Whining... What's that word again? Winging? Sook? What the fuck? Kid, stop making up words. But it'll take more than a few scratches to kill this one. What's a winging sook? I gotta, 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 I gotta find out now. What's this? Winging... Hey, games... Games taught me the most of English. Winge. It wins? A British... Oh, it's British. Jiren to present of whinging. Okay. Complain persistently and... Oh, so it's whining, basically. But... Suk... Suki. Suk suk. A female crab. Uh, I guess I it's... So. I guess it's something British that I've never heard. Sorry, what did you say? Mm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Talk now, talk now. Bow legged sow. Yeah, like that, like bow legged sow, yep. <laughs> she was nothing if not sympathetic. But she was right. This was no time to be bemoaning my my lot. We hadn't even reached the manor yet. I dabbed at my wounds with a tincture soaked cloth and wrapped it, wrapped them with bandages, then looked up at the other two. Wait, did you get that from Ethan from RE7 maybe? <laughs> Just oh, uh fucking Wrap it up. Did you see the uh, DLC for Village? Yeah, I see. We're playing good games now. Oh, okay. I think. <laughs> oh, you can just like, like, nope. Right, yeah. <laughs> We're just getting started. I grin back, putting a brave face on things. That's what I like to hear. Kid cheeringly announced from close quarters. Damn it! I wish I could do a more soft voice for her, because I imagine her voice being. Not being like this, but you know, yeah, being more 
Yeah, yeah, something like that. How, would you want a voice with me? <laughs> that would be lovely. <laughs> but then her eyes turned cold, like the cool glow of the moon in the night sky. It's gonna be a long night. I nodded, trying my hardest not to utterly lose myself in her pale blue eyes. All right, let's get the show back on the road. She turned away and marched off deeper into the trees without looking behind to see if me and Maggle were following her. Maggle, of course, was already right behind her, his unhurried gait making it seem as though nothing much had happened at all. Eh, he's just a chill guy. I jumped back up to my feet to chase after them. I was on the floor all this time? Jeez. I'd be in, I'd be in for even more trouble than I'd bargained if, for if I got separated from them. This looks like we're invading the Viper Manor. The dark forest inside the manor's perimeter seemed to go on forever, a labyrinth of trees and boulders. The manor itself loomed in the distance glowering over the vast grounds, and hidden within was a veritable mountain of treasure just waiting for us. Lord Lynx was the noble who ruled the remote territory of Regiora. Regiora? Regiora, I guess? He was also Kid's mortal enemy. Also, Regiora doesn't exist in, uh, uh, Wait, she, in Chrono Cross. She even book, but she already has mortal enemies? Yeah, she's the best thief in the land, in the realm. <laughs> Maggle, yeah, that's what I thought as well, but I know for a fact that the original, at least in Japan, he was called Gil, which again reminds me of another character uh, from Chrono Cross, so, you know, there's... I guess the new version just named him Maggle because he's a mage, haha, <laughs> get it? I don't know, that's my... that's what I think. That's what I think, but I don't know if it's true. We were there that night to steal a certain jewel he kept locked away in his most closely guarded vault. The Frozen Flame. Okay, it's pretty much Chrono Cross, stealing the Frozen Flame. For reference, so I'm gonna go into right, right into like fucking Chrono Cross spoilers, but... Um, so cover your ears in 3, 2, 1 if you don't want to hear. Yeah. The Frozen Flame is actually a piece of Lavos from Chrono Trigger that broke off and it has magical, well, it has fucked up powers. It's gonna be a big deal in Chrono Cross, the Frozen Flame. I don't know why they're stealing it here. I'm just gonna assume for the same reasons, but it doesn't have to be. But we'll see. The Frozen Flame was veiled in mystery. It was said to be imbued with an uncanny energy and possessed of a beauty and clarity that made it a priceless treasure. There we go! <laughs> Countless thieves had tried to steal it, and not one of them had come close to succeeding. And that's why it's called uh, the Unstolen Jewel. Well, I've seen a few translations of that. Uh, when we started the, this today, I mentioned uh, the f like literal f translation from French is the treasure that cannot be stolen. But I've seen like the most, I think the one that sounds the best to me is the Unstolen Jewel. It make kind of makes sense to make it, you know, so you don't have to describe a whole sequence of events to describe one thing, you know. So, the unstolen jewel it is. Which, that's just what we're gonna call it. Nor had any of them escaped the manor alive. And now it was our turn to try and sneak into the place of death. This place of death. I'm sorry, this place of death. Place of what? Death. Led by a girl who had the ambition to make the impossible possible, a hunger for vengeance that drove her onward, and a desire for riches that could never be satisfied. Now imagine this dream if I wasn't reading all this out loud, just pressing the button and everyone reading the, the, the line. It would make no fucking sense, would it? <laughs> it would be very silent and boring. <laughs> As we pressed on through the tree-filled darkness, the shadows gave, a, gave way at last, revealing the true extent of the vast mansion. Oh, look at that! My god, it's beautiful! Oh! Yay, John! Welcome, John! Wait, let me open this. 
the music's still there, and I, I can say what I'm here. Hello, John. Hello, welcome to the stream, my man. How are you? <laughs> Good morning, or afternoon, or evening, well, whichever it is for you with your work schedule, man. <laughs> your your time zone and your work schedule are clashing. Oh, I'm glad you're here. Sorry, I really wanted to let you know up ahead. And I started typing a message, but then work called, and then I started this, and I was like, holy shit, I didn't let John know. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know, man. It's good to see you. It's been a while. Hey, so far, I can totally see Chrono Cross in this. I know you played this already. It's like... I... It... I can't. <laughs> there's music, there's fucking Gale battle music, there's... I think they're invading the Viper Manor, I think. There's a uh, kid and Surge and some third guy, so let's see. <laughs> I was, I was, sis, only I wasn't on cam yet. <laughs> okay, let's get back into me reading a, a digital book. As he pressed on through the three tree filled darkness, the shadows gave way at last, revealing the Is that a cricket in the game or here? Yeah. Well that's the fucking bird! It's the, so hold on a second. We have a bird that's been coming the last few days that mimics various sounds. It's just like you think there's five birds out there? No, there's just one fucking bird making all those sounds. And most interestingly, it makes a cricket sound it's perfectly. An yeah, it's an it's a it's an artist. Maybe it's looking for an audition. I mean, ah, uh, damn it! You can't hear it. It's not. I can see it. It's not. Jeez, it's making so many sounds. I was like, what is that cricket in the room? No, it's the bird making. You know, mimicking a cricket. <laughs> I jumped around the room, sister. I jumped the room. I, I hit my head in the ceiling. I did all that, but I unfortunately wasn't on camera, so. <laughs> you're my sister. Of course, you're special. See, John knows. <laughs> yeah, I can. I, I gotta give her a good voice, but I can. Yeah, finally, say your prayers, Lynx, because we're coming for you. <laughs> no, she's not Popeye. For fuck's sake. Like <laughs> if she sounded like Popeye, she would go, yeah, 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 or something like that. Whatever he's. Yeah, he's yeah, <laughs> 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 oh, <geez. laughs> So, should we give her. Should, too much fun, like, yeah, <laughs> should, we, should we give her, like, the Peter Griffin voice? <laughs> 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 Love, there was one. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, say your prayers, Lynx. <laughs> I can't. I'm gonna fucking die. <laughs> Popeye kid. Oh, that was good. I haven't laughed like this in a while. <laughs> Wowie! Wowie! <laughs> Stop it! <laughs> Stop it! I'm trying to run a show here. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, my sides are beginning. That's why they call it split sides. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, well, welcome to the stream. We're playing a game here. Once every thirty minutes, we press a button. <laughs> oh, I almost cried there. <laughs> Wait, gotta go back. Mm. Keeping. <laughs> I all I hear now is giggity. <laughs> <laughs> oh god <laughs> I mean laughter is good isn't it Just, I'd rather laugh than cry so why not <laughs> hey Mayo welcome to the stream <laughs> well, well we're streaming radical dreamers but it's actually we're just laughing <laughs> that's the secret of the stream how have you been Mayo it's been a while <laughs> okay let's get serious this is fucking serious business people we gotta get serious <laughs> Yeah, th those are the best, man. Those are the best. When you laugh so much, your tears just start rolling. <laughs> yeah, it was exactly for the Super Famicom Satella view. Mayo knows. It was. And now they re-released it on modern systems along with Chrono Cross. So this is my first time experiencing this. And I'm hyped. Very hyped. 
to see this it shares so i read before that it's this story served as the basis for the story of chrono cross my favorite game of all time and you can see already some of the characters are the same i mean if you played chrono cross you would probably know um the main characters are the same some of the i think this setting is this where, where the the palace we're raiding is the same it should be like after they made both games the the creator of the series uh said that it's basically chrono cross in a parallel dimension so it's still legit you know it's just happening in an alternate timeline <laughs> What were we last reading? Yeah, here we go. Keeping to the overgrowth and the shadows of the shadows of the trees, we made our way around the manor walls in search of a means of an entry. Without an <laughs> Eventually we came to a terrace overlooking the garden. That's fucking Viper Mansion. If that's not a Viper Mansion, I don't know what it is. There was no sign of any guards nearby. The only thing surrounding the manor was an uncanny uncanny stillness. Nice. This will lead us... To the, should we give Magil the, the, the Slavic just, voice? Just be, just be you. Oh, what, with all the voices? No. You, just <laughs> we gotta give him voices. This will lead us straight into the West Wing. No, okay. No. <laughs> we'll just give him a D voice. No, Cause he's... I just hear Ayla speaking. <laughs> That's so wrong. <laughs> you, Maybe. Can, you can't use that for anyone else now. You blow it. What about Komrad Nikolai? Komrad Nikolai speak no. like that. Nikolai doesn't speak like that. He speak like that. Not like you. <laughs> Not like him. <laughs> oh. uh, I don't think Magil's a girl. I'm just gonna go on a limb and say <laughs> he's not a girl. <laughs> yeah, John, me too, man. Me too. <laughs> this will lead us straight into the West Wing. Just as well. We don't have any business in the rest of the manor tonight said Magil, gazing up at the dark building towering over us in the night. Ooh, ooh, more Chrono Cross spoilers. Cover your ears in three, two, one. So, in the in Chrono Cross, this is the place where we actually meet the man himself, fucking Balthazar, the guru of reason, the guy who made the time travel possible, well, who made Epoch possible in Chrono Trigger, and he has a major role in Chrono Cross, so major, so big that, like, at first you meet him, like, huh, they named the character the same, that can't be the same guy, this is not the same game, it's not the same world, by the end of Chrono Cross, you're like, holy fucking shit, what did I just witness here? But yeah, we'll get to that. How is that a fucking spoiler? You said nothing. I said that Balthazar will you be said, there. You said, well, meet another character, and it's gonna be epic, and nothing about it. That's not, not a spoiler. I want a spoiler okay, now. Okay, semi-spoiler. <laughs> oh, spoiler. What's gonna happen? Uh, it's huge. That's the like the, that's the the gist of Chrono Cross. If I say what spells are up to, <laughs> Sasha likes spoilers. No, not not cool. Netzol, ne Netzol. <laughs> so this game takes about people say two to four hours to beat. And we like we since this reading. is on my channel, this is gonna be like twenty to forty hours. But that's great, like a true JRPG. <laughs> Who's that, kid? All right then, what are we waiting for? With that kid made to to kid made to vault over the railing of the terrace. Stop, Mad. Stop, Magil hissed sharply. Remember what we're here for. Our main target is the vault and the frozen flame within it. We focus on this above all else. Your vengeance is of secondary concern. Agreed. Glancing over her shoulder, Kid replied with a reluctant, Yeah, yeah, don't get your knickers in a twist. But if we happen to run into him, I'm gonna knock that Drongo's block off and neither you or anybody else is gonna stop me. Heh heh heh. Ha ha ha. She's just laughing weirdly. I, I think she broke out in evil laughter. <laughs> well, that's something like that, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, depending on how fast I read. I guess Kid was going to get her way whether we liked it or not. Let's go, boys. The night is young. <laughs> I can't get a good voice for her. We're just gonna do with what we have. She cleared the railing with a sprightly hop and vanished into the inside the matter. I glanced toward Magal and nodded in silence. 
We followed Kid's lead and were soon inside Lord Lynx's lair. I just have a, an issue with him being called Lord Lynx here, but oh well. The darkness swallowed us whole. Oh, we're going in, I guess. Oh my god, I got inside. The corridor stretched off to the left and right from the terrace. It seemed equally dark and chilly in both directions. Right, go right down the corridor or left down the corridor? Let's go left. That's my, that's my thing. <laughs> that's what I, that's what I heard, Yupika, yeah? <laughs> Let's go left. What is? It's I don't know what she means, but like I've heard it in several things. So we pressed on through the darkness, down corridors that turned and twisted, snake-like. Ah, I can't even read that. Come back, text. We continued creeping cautiously down the corridors. Kid moved proudly and stealthily, like a cat stalking its prey. While in the shadows, Maggle followed, gliding swiftly and silently, like a sinister breeze. We pressed on into the embrace of the Weaver of Fate. Ha! Huh. Fate's there too. Damn it. I wish I knew some text just buzzes through. Oh, look at them. We took the corridor leading from the left hand side of the terrace, eventually arriving at an intersection with some stairs. That actually fucking looks like Kid. Yeah. The, 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 sh the shadow. I don't know, Maggle, and which one should be surged. I guess the rightmost one? Yeah. Okay. Dancing in the halls of Lynx's manor. <laughs> The path to the right led down the stairs. The path to the left was dark, a dark side passage, and the main corridor continued straight onward. So, where were we gonna go? We turned back. We were like, fuck this shit, we turned back. <laughs> oh, Serge is the one with the potato on his head. Okay. So, the path led the right. The path to the right led down the stairs. The path to the left was a dark side passage. Let's save here. Just to be safe. You can save whenever. Yeah. You actually played games like this on your mobile, right? Oh, we got a raid. We got a raid. Who else but Sexy Wesky. Welcome, raiders. Welcome. Thank you for the raid, Wesky. It's good to see you, my man. Thank you. Thank you for that, John. I don't even have to bother uh with with my keyboard thank you so much that actually means a lot man and uh oh it's it's broken again well what can you do tell us what you've been playing wesky since streamlabs won't tell us it's like no you're not never gonna find out what he just played <laughs> thank you wesky thank you for the resub my man who else is there simon hello simon welcome raiders welcome to radical dreamers the Treasure that's hard to steal. The unstolen jewel. Uh, it's a side story to Chrono Trigger. And the basis for Chrono Cross. So that's it in a nutshell. I'm good, man. I'm good. Busy, but very good. What's... Oh, you think that, that could be it? Possibly, yeah. I... I think it's good. So, like I was saying, yeah, I'm I'm pretty good. How are you, Wesky? What's up? What were you playing? Since you know it doesn't want to tell us, tell us what you ha what what you were playing. Which game was it? Yeah, if you wanna, if you want to sh shout out uh, Professor Wesker or anybody with like non. Latin non-English characters you just don't press enter but I'm pretty sure John knows that uh, you don't well basically you know when you're typing its na his name and you go at Professor Wesker like this so I have to you have to actually write the whole name show one two three four because once you select this if you do that it just turns Asian Kind of. I guess that makes sense. Let's try it. Let's see if that was it. One, two, three, four. But then without... Yeah, I think John did it right. Because it wouldn't even add him. It wouldn't even shout out if he didn't do it right. Oh. So they changed that. That wasn't like that before. Because I know before, if I did it like that, and like with Asian characters, it would just 
not do it. <laughs> it would just be like, nope, <laughs> ain't gonna do it. Oh, good. Happy to see you uh, using those <laughs> those emoji, Wesky. <laughs> My man. <laughs> that comes from Zombie, our Zombie Chow and Rick and Morty. I saw that <laughs> Zombie used that emoji from some server of his and uh, <laughs> and I immediately thought of Rick and Morty when um, Jerry's in the simulation that, that uh, glitched postman keeps saying "My man" and just glitching out. <laughs> Resident Evil Four and Five, nice, 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 Wesky, nice. Our our Resident Evil fan club is working well. <laughs> is Kun around? Kun, are you there? Like, knowing Kun, he's probably just waking up. <laughs> he's he tends to stay up pretty late. Oh, uh, so this is like a text, what do they call it, a visual no novel game? So what are we doing? I'm selecting a path. Why am I playing a game with choices? This is like my, my kryptonite, is make me choose things. I'm done. We're stuck here forever. Oh, good to know. Good to know. I haven't seen Kun in a while uh, either. I haven't, well, the last time I streamed, where was it? Because you also raided me. 11 days ago, that's how long I didn't stream or barely played anything. I just played like Dead by Daylight after work with family. Because there's not much time for some serious gaming, you know, like playing Outbreak or anything else. So, you know, Dead by Daylight is like fast. You can play a game or three and if you gotta go or work calls or life calls, you can just leave it. You know what I mean. But good to see you guys. Good to see you. John's here. Wesker's here. This is already going great. Oh, so where we, where did we go? The path to the left was a dark side passage and the main corridor continued straight forward. We're gonna go down the main corridor, huh? You wanna be, you want in on these choices? Yeah. Main corridor. Because yeah. I kind of feel if we go down the stairs, we're gonna end up in a dungeon. We continued onward, past where the stairs and the side passage emerged into the main corridor. Hey, I'm coming behind them. Look at this. <laughs> I came so fast. Found ourselves in front of off. some morning. Double doors. <laughs> when is let's fucking check the door. Kid gently pushed the heavy doors open and peeked inside. Doesn't look like anyone's in here. It seemed to be the main hall of the manor. Oh shit. There was a massive table, beautiful decorations on the walls and thick columns decorated with sculptures of birds and beasts. Fixed to the wall in the back towered the tremendous pipe organ like a burnished black mountain. Dozens of candles provided a dim flickering light, sending the corners of the room dancing in and out of shadow. Several enormous portraits glowered down from high on the wall. Were these members of Lynx's family? I was busy staring at the painting depicting a young husband and wife when I realized that their eyes had turned to look right at me. Holy shit, that's actually scary. <laughs> uh, I just thought, like, it just hit me. This game has to have multiple endings, right? I never even thought about it. Because if we chose another door, God knows where we would have ended up. And another thing. Which I forgot, talking about the first thing. But I'll remember. <laughs> <laughs> I just hit me. Phew! It has to be multiple endings. Yeah, da, Comrade John agrees. Confirms there are, there are multiple endings. Okay? So, it's gonna be pretty cool for multiple playthroughs whenever we do the Chrono series. We do this. I like it. Okay, they hadn't. <laughs> Don't worry, this isn't about to turn into some dumb ghost story. <laughs> It just looked that way because of the way the flickering light of the candles reflected against the glossy old paint oil paintings. Uh, obviously. Probably. <laughs> this place gives me the creeps. And get a load of all of those, of all those m ugly mugs. There's nothing for us here. Let's look somewhere else. Neither Magal nor I had any objections. We will left the hall and return to the corridor. Okay, I guess we're done here. Eventually it led us to an intersection. Some stairs going down to the right to dark side passage. So we really gotta like search around. 
Okay, down the stairs or side passage? Down the stairs. We're gonna end up in a dungeon, are we? With Luca, whatever her name was. Slowly we crept down the staircase, descending deeper into the blackness as we went. At the bottom of the path, the path split. Oh, come on, man. The way to the left continued into an atrium that resembled a sort of plaza, while the path to the right was a winding passageway that trailed off into darkness. Um... Uh, Let's check the atrium. Good night, Wesky. Good night. Thanks for the raid. And it was good seeing you, man. Seven different endings and an exclusive ending specifically for this remaster. Oh, okay, all right. I saw that they added the developer's ending to the Chrono Cross remaster as well, which, as far as I'm aware, wasn't a thing in the in the original PlayStation One release. So that would be pretty sweet like having an additional ending both here and there nice oh you're you're also gonna stream well have a good stream simon have a good stream didn't know you're streaming so seven eight endings eight endings total that's not bad chrono trigger has what 11 cross has I'm going to say 9, but I'm not sure. It's going to be cool. Oh, go to sleep. Sorry. I read stream there instead of dream. Go well, good night, Simon. Good night. Thanks for dropping by. <laughs> yeah, no worries. Thanks for dropping by and have a good night. Sweet dreams and all. Kid poked her head through the arch-shaped door and took a look around. Hi, hey, it's big in here. Must be some kind of hole. We took a cautious look around and entered, one after another. I imagine them like in Scooby-Doo, you know, hunched, sneaking inside the mansion. <laughs> hey, nobody said, wow, what a mansion, when, you, when they entered this. Wow, what a manor, whatever. The atrium was like a beautiful plaza, complete with a statue that doubled as a fountain. Because why wouldn't it? Scary looking statue that looks like Gollum had a baby with a gargoyle. A gargolem, if you wish. Pillars and arches lined the walls, and in the center was a small pool of clear water, above which the statue stood. On the other side of the room I could see another arched entrance like the one we had come through. Ooh, that's cold, the kid was scooping up water from the fountain. I went over to her and, resting my hand on the edge of the marble basin, uh, peered into the pool beneath. Shadows flickered under the water's surface. You reckon those fish are rare? As in, valuable? Kid leaned right over the edge. I couldn't see the bottom. I wondered how deep it was. It's not a lake. It's an ocean. <laughs> baby demon. Chrono Cross Remaster also has a new ending specific. Yeah. Yeah, that's what well, I think. That's the developer's ending because I know Chrono Trigger had always had the developer's ending. Basically, you meet the devs of the game, the staff, and they, as characters in the game, of course, and they introduce themselves and talk about the game. And from what I understand, that's what they added to uh, to Chrono Cross Remaster as well. I also read a few, re quite a few reviews, which say the remaster version is has. Of Chrono Cross, not this game. It's not, not much to render here, but Chrono Cross specifically has terrible frame rate drops and some issues. Uh, and they recommend using the original graphical style over the uh, the remaster one, which is good because I've been planning to play with the original graphical style. It just, it's just the way I like it. Though I've heard from John here that uh, that the remastered art style is not. Uh, half bad so we'll see we'll see once we finish this today or tomorrow <laughs> the shadow of one of the fish grew larger and larger whoa sensing danger kid leapt back from the edge clack a fish leaped out from the water and snapped at her its jaw bristling with razor sharp teeth its mouth closed shut on the air where she'd been only moments before, and with a splash, the fish darted back under the water. Piranodons. 
sure, why not? Deadly carnivorous fish with razor sharp teeth and powerful jaws that could snap a monster's horn in half. So, it's so one thing that I'm not still would have gone that far, but you know, animal people weren't really a thing in Chrono Trigger, uh, aside from Frog, obviously, who was cursed into being, you know, having an animal form. But in Chrono Cross, they're abundant. They're called demi humans, and there's a whole reason how that happened in the story, how it came to that. Because remember, it's this, this is in the same world as Chrono Trigger, but things happened that, well, changed the timeline. So, again, I don't know how much of that is here, but Piranha Dawns, we didn't have those in Chrono Trigger. Not like we've seen everything there it was in the world of Chrono Trigger, but I kind of feel like they, they belong more in the Chrono Cross world after everything was changed. Staring in horror... Horror, I watched as dark shadows began to gather and what little of the pool I could make out. The piranha dons must have detected prey. Soon the room was filled with the sound of splashing and snapping as the fish teemed at the water's surface. Bloody hell! Even Kid was uneasy. She took another step back. How many piranha dons were in the pool? The thought of what would happen if they all leapt clear of the water and attacked at once crossed my mind. A bead of cold sweat rolled down my forehead. Suddenly the water coming from the statue turned crimson and shot out in a powerful jet that nearly touched the ceiling. Kid jumped back again. I just stood in shock, watching the torrent of water erupting from the statue. The scarlet waters continued to gush out from the fountain. The pool grew redder and redder and started to overflow. We looked on, entranced. But the spell was soon broken when we realized that the water was starting to flow faster and faster over the rim of the basin. Basin or basin? Basin. Oh, cool, thank you. The piranha dons began to jump and snap at the water's surface with bloodthirsty glee. Oh shit, we're gonna get flooded. Hold on. Uh, no! You gotta choose quickly. <laughs> Uh, ah, a ball of bolt of pain shot up my. C well, let's. You know what? I'm gonna do something because I wanted to see how the loading system works, just so we know for the next episode. You want to load? Because I'm really, really curious. According to the manual, I should do this. It will give, bring us back to the main menu. Because I have no idea how it, this is gonna load. I just want to make sure if it loads, it doesn't like bring us in front of the manor. And as another thing, focus on the game and react. So, Radical Dreamers kind of loads too long for a, for a 1996 game that had what, like a megabyte at most? Okay, there we go. So now, I choose my save. Whoop. Where do we go back? Oh, to the room we got in. Okay. Auto text. <laughs> A lot of letters, yeah. <laughs> Imagine all those letters. I like how you can just press a button and have it play itself. No, would you gotta read real fast, but it would still work. Like auto playing game. I love the little sound effects as well. It's an interesting direction to take for you know to continue the story of Chrono Trigger. When you when you uh, get uh, not in fact, how how to say it in, into it when you uh, concentrate on the book and hear the sound. It yeah. Have a big impact on, on the on the general. Yeah. Here we go. Okay. Okay, this is how far we got. Other side. Quick, there's an exit on the other side. 
I pointed at the doorway opposite where we'd come in. I tried my hardest to rush across the red pool, sending up great gouts of crimson water, but it was as thick as blood and I found myself struggling to move. I felt sharp jabs of searing pain as countless pteranodons snapped at my legs. Kid gritted her teeth in pain. Serge, we gotta do something before we get turned into mincemeat. What was I gonna do? Rush to the exit on the side, rush back the way we came? Deal with the fish. I'll exit on the other side. We have to get to the other side! We desperately tried to wade toward the exit op opposite us. The water was already up to my waist. A strange smell like warm meat rose from the water's surface. Ugh. Arr! I yelped as my left thigh and my right ankle simultaneously erupted with pain. Maybe I made a mistake, Fish is gonna eat us? There was still a long way to the exit on the opposite side, what was I gonna do? Go back the way we came or just keep rushing? <laughs> That's right, those fish weren't gonna stop me. We desperately tried to wade toward the exit opposite us. The water was already up to my waist. A strange, strange smell like warm meat rose from the water's surface. Countless pteranodons were tearing at my legs, and the bites burned like fire. It was still a long way to the exit to the opposite side. I kind of feel we should... Yeah, let's let's try what sister says. Deal with the fish. What was I gonna do? Deal with the fucking fish, I guess. What? You wanna try and pick this little lot off one by one? Kid glared back at me, her face a picture of exasperated disbelief. Yeah, that's that's what I imagine she would say. Something like that. <laughs> Don't be a bloody idiot, Serge. You wanna die here? While I stood there, my mouth agape, a pteranodon sank its teeth into my foot. A jolt of pain surged up my leg, making me jump. What was I gonna do? I guess we'll keep going to the other side. I, I think the smartest option was just go back, but now it's too late. Ah! A bolt of pain shot up my cough and I came close to fainting. I stood my ground as best I could, flicking away the pteranodon that had bitten me. But soon a horrible ring of shadows began to circle the water around me. I was surrounded. Keep going! Quick! There's an exit on the other side! I pointed at the doorway opposite where, opposite where we'd come in. <laughs> I tried my hardest to rush across the red pool, sending up great gouts of crimson water, but it was as thick as blood and I found myself struggling to move. I felt sharp jabs of searing pain as countless pteranodons snapped at my legs. Indescribable agony overwhelmed me as I crashed face first into the water. A red haze drifted down to fill my eyes. Kids screams grew more and more distant as my consciousness plummeted into the bottomless darkness. Is this a game over? Yep. Did I die? Yep. And that was how I died. Hey! That's the girl who stole the stars. The song from Chrono Cross. Okay, so you can die here. I thought you can die in these games. Let's just keep going. Oh, Jesus Christ. Okay, I guess I guess we're going back. We're not going across. There we go. I could have found out how loading works that way as well. You should have fucked the fish at the beginning. I think that would hurt my penis, honestly, if I tried that, because they had razor sharp teeth. Kid can't help. She's a girl. And Mag Magil? I don't know what's his deal. Does Mag he even have a penis? Magisil. Oh, can I save? I'll try to save later. D E D. Dead. <laughs> So, John, I'll try again. I'll save again just before uh, just before we move on. I'm going to save before we get into the battle again. <laughs> I'm trying to be nice here. You mean behave well? Nah, it's okay. It's my stream. You don't have to like behave. <laughs> Piranodons! Where do I know the name Piranodon? What if I save now? Whoop! Will it save at this line or will it go back to the entrance? 
All right, all right. I talked to him earlier, yeah. Bloody hell. Bloodthirst to glee. Where's back the way we came? Kid, let's get out of here! In a panic, we splashed through the water back to the corridor we came from. The fangs of the pteranodon snapped at my legs and I felt a searing pain, but I had to endure. Endure it if I had any hope of reaching the entrance. Breathing heavily, I finally found myself back at the corridor outside. So just once if you go back. There are wrong choices. Phew! That was a close call. Oh, I didn't see the date. Okay, no worries. So that whole thing was a trap, eh? Talk about Twisted. Lynx is even more of a sick bastard than I thought. I was about to say he would, wouldn't have to be if he didn't have to guard against people like her breaking into his home. But I thought better of it. <laughs> okay, this game really has yeah. it's got good humor. Well, at any rate, I think we can consider that a dead end. Let's go back. Defeated, we left the atrium. Something caused Kid to stop in her tracks. Hello, hello, what do we have here? She pointed to the side of the entranceway to the hall. I found myself face to face with a sculpture of an old man's face with a truly phenomenal beard. Oh, look at that. The sculpture's eyes seemed to gleam with life. For a piece of marble, it seemed almost too realistic. It's a mouth, no, it's a mouth of tru truth, announced Magel. An enchanted statue that can tell when you're lying. If it catches you out, it'll bite your hand off. Magel kept his explanation simple so that Kid wouldn't drift off before he got to the important part. <laughs> huh? So what's it doing here, then? I suspect it's part of a greater mechanism. Stick your hand in, in its gob, do ya? Righto, let's see what happens, shall we? With a mischievous glint in her eye, Kid darted over and stuck her hand in its mouth without a moment's hesitation. Stop, kid. <laughs> she stood there for a moment waiting, but it didn't take long for her to get bored. Huh, nothing. Suddenly, I had an idea. Hey, kid, who's the greatest thief who ever lived? Ha, huh, me, of course, ya, da ya drunk. Kid's kid answered without a moment's hesitation, and then suddenly her face twisted with pain. The teeth of the marble sculpture had clamped down on her hand. I it it bit me, she cried. Well. Knock it off, everyone knows it's the true ow The sculpture bit her again as soon as she spoke. I forgot that Kid has a British accent, by the way. Er, you, you little... A cold sweat formed on Kid's forehead. The sculpture was tightening its grip. It won't let go until you say something true. Despite the obvious urgency of the situation, Magal was matter-of-fact as ever. Just say anything, Kid, anything, as long as it's the truth. Obviously... Kid wasn't listening. Instead, she just kicked awkwardly at the statue. Oi, Beardy! Let go of me bloody hand! She planted her feet either side of its mouth and tried her hardest to pull herself out. Australian? Really? Not British? I'm thinking. Yeah, I used to think it's Australian, but then I thought I was wrong and it's British. But then now you say it's Australian again. I'll do my best with that. He's a fucking fan of these games like I am. Okay. 
I kind of remember from the first time I played Chrono Cross. I was like, oh, look, she's, she has Australian accent. Don't know how, but there, there it is. But then over the, over the years, I was like, nah, I must have been British. I, I keep imagining her speaking like Yangus from Dragon Quest VIII. You know, if you, yeah, have you ever yeah. played Dragon Quest VIII, John? You know how Yangus speaks? That's what I imagine, like Cockney a accent. But I guess that's like the Australian accent is a shoot-off from the British accent. So we'll try to go Australian. I don't know. I never tried to do, do an Australian accent. I'm thinking. Oi, beardy. <laughs> okay. She heaved, kicked and stamped, grunted and strained. And then, finally, her hand popped free. Wait, what? I was taken aback by what I'd just witnessed and couldn't say a word. See? Told you it was the truth. Kid raised her hand in the air triumphantly, as if to demonstrate. I could see heavy bite marks. Ooh. The sculptures the sculpture hadn't come away from the struggle, unskated either. Kid's attempts to break free had left it cracked in several places. She broke fucking marble statue. Why not? Magal pointed silently at part of it. It went to take a, I went in I went to take a closer look and saw a pale, flesh colored tongue. Oof. I expect we're supposed to put something there, commented Magal. Oh, don't don't go there. <laughs> something. What exactly? I replied. Kid stood there for a moment, lost in thought, and then she started to unload all the knickknacks she'd been carrying. There was a strange collection of odds and ends, pulled out from her pockets, her boots, and even from her braid. All right, Serge, now it's your turn to have a go at stupid statue. What? <laughs> what did you think of love? You're changing it. <laughs> I'm trying to. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't rehearse. I wanted to. Right. When I, I wanted to, this to be the first playthrough, so that's how I went in with it. I didn't. I had no idea what they were going to talk about in this. Oh, hold on a second. Where is the? When's the IP switch? I should check that. If it didn't happen already, it's about to happen. Yup. Where's my modem thingy? 4G PC. Well, let's save again. Just little things are biting our hands here. Better make sure. We're we're in a safe spot. How long till the IP switch? Actually, 20 minutes left. Exactly 20 minutes. So at 2031. Let me set an alarm. For that just so I don't get surprised 2031 just so you don't get yeah just if something important is happening as it's you know about to switch just so I'm aware so it's gonna be a 20 uh, 30 that's when you're gonna remind me whoop there you go alarm set Joop. All right, we're not gonna get jumped by that. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I like, I like, I like the new emoji you're using. <laughs> emotes. I'm sorry. On Twitch, they're called emotes. John. Kid grinned at me, holding her assortment of knickknacks out on the palms of both hands. What? She just dumped their whole inventory. I guess she decided that whatever further horrors the statue had in store, she'd rather not face them herself. Nice kid. Real nice. Grumbling to myself, I reached out to pick an item. I chose... Hold on a minute, just hit me. This gives Serge way more personality than he has in the entire yeah. Chrono Cross. Yeah. He actually... You can hear his thoughts, because in Chrono Cross you're supposed to be Serge, like he's... He's the mute bastard. <laughs> he's the uh, silent protagonist, and... He really doesn't speak much. I think the most emotional motion I felt for Surge was spoilers. <laughs> Again, I gotta do that when I'm about to say something when somebody might, don't, might doesn't want to get spoiled. But uh, the most motion I felt for him was when he dies briefly, kinda. But 
he doesn't speak in Chrono Cross. Here, he's like, he's got a whole personality and feels nice. <laughs> so, wh what did I choose? A small silver mirror. A file, as in like a file, not like a file, I guess. Not not like a document, I mean like the thing that... A centipede! Why the fuck do you have a centipede, kid? Hold, hold on, one, one by one. A tube of lipstick, that makes sense, kinda. <laughs> he has more emotion than Chrono and himself in Cross Combined. Yeah, he does, because he kind of speaks, and he's the one telling the, the story. But the diary at the intro was still kids. It's reminds me of the intro of Chrono Cross as well. I'm just... It's weird, like, playing your favorite game of all time, and you're playing a side story to it. It's a weird feeling, man. Dried grapes, sure. Length of fine thread, sure. A sizable... Pattered. Pattered? What's a pattered if it's not the explosive, like a, a firecracker? Is that what they mean? Because we. Pattered on. Yeah, it's a firecracker from French. Patard. French English. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, we call them petarda or petarde in, uh, in uh, plural. Yeah, it's in Serbian. But. Uh, I've never, I never known that can be said in English as well. So there you go, a firecracker, a vellum scroll. What the fuck is vellum? This is the kind of game where I'm gonna learn. Like I, you thought you knew English, you know, you knew nothing. A vellum is, oh, animal skin. Okay, so it's like the old style scroll. Wait, you have animal skin scrolls, lipsticks, and firecrackers in one. Like what the hell? Which which? Which ear is this supposed to be? Yeah, petarda. For, for singular and for pl plural, it's petarde with an E at the end instead of an A. Nice one, John. John's like becoming a full-blown Serbian pro. In a few months, he's going to be like, he's, he's going to get over here and just order a meal and a room without, you know, without even... You're going to order kevape. Yeah. <laughs> I can imagine him doing that, yeah. And I chose to not waste my time on this. <laughs> okay, that's the... Should I pick something with a centipede? All the food. So vellum is... Uh, vellum scroll is the animal, sk animal skin scroll like they used in the Middle Ages. That's why I'm... That's why I'm... Well, it could be a pepper scroll as well. I think we're gonna need a file. So I'm thinking a centipede. It's a live thing. You can just break it and it'll run away from you in two directions. You sure? <laughs> you sure? You have? You have? Yeah. I I, I, I want to put a centipede on its tongue. I just want to see what's gonna happen. Please, it's tongue. Tongue. Please <laughs> no. don't. Do <laughs> I mean, <come> on. <laughs> on its tongue. I'm sorry. Sasha is always criticizing when I say tongue. It's not a tongue. <laughs> it's a tongue. <laughs> so on its tongue. But I think some regions say tongue. <laughs> not thong. Tongue. <laughs> centipede. Oh, that that is just. What are you doing walking around with a centipede in your pockets? That's a legit question. <laughs> I reeled back in disgust. This isn't your pet or something, is it? Don't be thick, Serge. It's a toy, not a pet. A toy. You could have picked any something nicer, anything nicer. It is nice. Nice for giving people nasty surprises. Hey, hey. She seemed to think this was an entirely reasonable attitude. <laughs> no, 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 not even. Oh yeah, tongue. That would be a tongue, not not a thong. <laughs> not a thong. <laughs> Sorry, I just wanted to blip. <laughs> oh, yeah. The, when you say tongue, I immediately mean uh, think of one in Silent Hill 3 where you gotta grab the key, key grabbed by tongues. It was called something like that. So, yeah. <laughs> Let's see. Entirely reasonable to her, maybe. What was she doing with all this stuff? I reached for the rubber centipede. Oh, it's rubber. Not interesting. <laughs> Try not to think too hard about what I was what I was doing. Stuck into the I stuck it into the mouth of truth, only for it to fall down the back of its throat. 
Serge, you'll pay for this, growled Kid, staring daggers at me. Hey, you, you gave me to pick these things. Yikes, I'll get it back, I promise. Stealing my nerve, I reached into the mouth of truth. This is gonna end badly. Suddenly, my hair stood on, the end, on end. It was licking my hand. The giant uncanny tongue, tongue slopped back and forth across my fingers like I was a lollipop. Urgh, I'm gonna puke. Keep it together, Serge. Do it for the centipede. Kids, support. Support. Didn't do much to help me. But I somehow managed to pinch the centipede with the tips of my fingers and pull it out. You must really love this thing. Ah, uh, not really. I just hate to see stuff go to waste. I I'm sorry, what? <laughs> Why had I even bothered? Well, no luck there either. Wanna try something else? Asked Kid almost like this was a game. I just wanted this to be over with. I reached out for the next item and chose... <laughs> to not waste my time on this. <laughs> <laughs> a, file. a file okay wait think it's got a tongue that licks things oh. what could we use so far, is gonna be wacky. yeah it's not gonna work so let's. I guess we can try a file and file its teeth off. Gonna ask a mirror if we're good looking or not. Let's uh, try a file. Sorry. Let's try a file. I took the file and placed it inside. Placed it inside the mouth of the marble sculpture. It didn't seem to be the right item for the job. Crunch, crunch, crunch. I was stunned. The mouth of truth started chewing on the file. It was eating it. Oh! Kid screamed with rage. Me file. Me lovely scratchy scrapey file. I can't believe you just let that happen. Crunch. You're in big trouble now, mate. She was clenching her fists and trembling with fury. You told me to pick. It's not fair. Fight me, hippie bot. <laughs> Sorry, I'll get you another one, I promise. I also wanted to add, just don't hit me, but thought better of it. <laughs> I'll hold you to that, muttered Kid in a threatening grumble. If you're, if you're just gonna feed the statue with all me stuff, we're done here. I promise that's not what I'm trying to do. I don't even know what I'm trying to do here. You'd better bloody not be might. Once again, she showed me her collection. I chose... You know what? I'm gonna pick a length of fine thread. Let's see what's... Oh! Wait, a file still there. Was gonna say we don't have a file anymore? I took the piece of thread, a length of very finely spun silk. It didn't seem like a good idea to just shove it in, so I tried dangling it into the statue's mouth. Oh, really? I mean, we are putting things into a statue that can bite your head off. Uh, well... Probably can't swallow your head, but like your hand off, that's what I was trying to say. Is it gonna get scarier than this, John? I suppose it will. It's based around Viper Mansion. I'm just guessing still it's Viper Mansion, because that's where Lynx lived in uh, Chrono Cross. Watch yourself. That stuff ain't cheap. It's made by royal silkworms. I'll have you know. Kid watched me critically. Why don't you try putting things in, girl? The thread slipped deeper and deeper into the mouth of truth. And then I felt a slight tug. I tried win winding it carefully back around my finger. Definitely creepy, huh? At the end of it was a small piece of paper. Nice one, Serge. That's gonna be a clue. Kid's eyes lit up with delight. The note says, try again. <laughs> this is what is this a trolling statue? We stood in stunned silence. I mean, of course we did. Uh, yeah, licky tricky piece of ah! Kid ripped up the paper in a rage and threw it away. Then started kicking the mouth of truth. Magal was leaning against the wall, watching the spectacle in silence. 
I'm guessing that wasn't the right, the one then. What next? I chose. Wait, does she know what I need to use? Let's try to put some lipstick on it. I picked up the small lacquered tube of lipstick. And without knowing quite why, smeared it all over the statue's mouth. <laughs> what are you? Me lippy! Kid exploded with fury at the sight of the mouth of truth's bright red lips. <laughs> I don't think I ran into the mouth of truth, so this is a new to me. So yeah... Apparently you can miss a lot. I was hoping you can, because it would have a way more replay value. Hello, kitty. You just hop on, don't ask questions, bring dust with you and hair. I'm okay with that, certainly. Just please calm down. We need to brush her again. Look at this shit. That would be lovely, but you're going to miss, like, smearing lipstick across the, the, the marble statue. What are you getting so mad about? You don't even wear makeup. Meow. <laughs> I honestly, I often imagine her going like, uh, like you know, the creepy Yoshi. <laughs> Bring ha! This is my cat going meow. <laughs> there she is, Just settling down. Okay, settle down so I can play on, please. No, that's not a good position. She's gonna flip around a few more times. Need my thigh, cause why not? Not like I can feel pain from the claws in my flesh. Nope. It's all good. Then lick yourself a bit. Yeah, yeah. No hurry, cat. This is, I'm, all, I'm here to be your chair. Why not? <laughs> it's for marking our path to make sure we don't get lost. I can't nail that accent, but I'll try. Huh, I didn't realize. Guess that would explain why you brought it with you. What exactly is that supposed to mean? What's so funny about me having lipstick anyhow? Grr, I mean, err. Nothing at all. Why is Serge afraid of her? It didn't take much to tell that this was the calm before the storm. You'd better buoy me some more when we were done here. Yep, she was mad, all right. Oh, okay. Uh, okay, I'm sorry. Let's just try something else. Kid gave me a doubting glare in response to my apology. Why did you give me a lipstick if you don't want me to use it, woman? Take this serious, though. I'm true with you. I gulped and nodded in, in a panic and then reached out for the next item. I chose... How about to not waste my time on this? How about... I lingered for a moment but pulled my hand away. It didn't seem like any of them was what we were looking for. All right, let's just forget about it for now, muttered kids, show, sewing her valuables. Oh, look, that actually worked. I was sure we'd find a use for this stuff. Whatever, best get moving, eh? Defeated, we left the atrium behind. Wait, what? Really? Okay, I guess we need another item. Leaving the atrium behind us, we immediately found ourselves at a fork in the path. To the right was a passage to some stairs leaping up, leaving upward. A dark passageway continued on directly about ahead of where we stood. I kind of want to try all the items on the Statue of Truth. You gotta be kidding me, shouted Kid, glaring at me. Are you telling me to swim through a bloody lake of pyranodons? Yeah, you can count me out, mate. How am I supposed to charm me with victims with big chunks bitten out of me? <laughs> you missed a lot, Lupka. You missed a fucking <laughs> genius. We just, we had a statue that you put your hand, like, your hand in and, you know, you gotta say something true so it releases. So we ended up feeding it a, a, a rubber caterpillar, a, 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 a file you know, for filing, like Turpia, uh, a string, and uh, what else was there? Um, when we put some lipstick on it as well, there was, <laughs> what was the lipstick on the, on the, on the statue? Yeah, there was, I did not expect to see that. <laughs> I did not expect him to actually smear lipstick on the statue. <laughs> 
I just talked to her today. Is it urgent? Can it? I guess it's it's not urgent because she would call me. She can wait until I'm done with this. <laughs> I guess she had a point. Here's a better plan. Why don't we go back to Beardy and try sticking something down with his gob? Yeah, that's what I want to go back. So, sure enough, she pulled out her bundle of odds and ends. Do I have to? I asked, knowing the answer. Which was probably just as well, since Kid only glared at me in response. My hand hovered for a moment before I finally reached for something. I chose... Okay, what next? What what next? Um, what didn't we try? <laughs> Tube of lipstick again. <laughs> no, I don't want to see a map. I want oh, this okay. to be as genuine as possible. Thank you. <laughs> a small silver mirror. Let's try that. I took the small silver silver mirror. The sculpture stared Where impassively. In which in which uh, room? We're still talking to the beardy. <laughs> uh, where is that? The Statue of Truth. I don't know, love. Like, it's like not like I can see the. <laughs> What's the deal? Well, I'm trying to guess what we need to do with this. Nobody knows, so she just gave me her whole inventory, and I gotta put things in its mouth. <laughs> and for the record, it's got a live tongue that can lick, apparently. So, don't know what this is about. The sculpture stared imp impassively. Oh, IP switch is about to happen, guys. So, let's not let's not press A. I'm just I'm gonna save here and see what's gonna happen while after the IP switch. If the last two times it didn't like, I didn't have to restart the stream. So I'm hoping that's gonna be here as well. Let's see, 4G. What's about to happen either way? No matter what we do. But I just want to make sure when exactly. Oh, in about 30 seconds. Yeah, an IP switch. What the fuck? Like, that never happens. <laughs> How do we get to that? No thank you. No thank you. They changed it? No, they, they don't. They don't decide when it's gonna switch. It happens every four hours. I decide when it's gonna happen. Oh, it's happening now, so she's not gonna hear me anyway. <laughs> it's just me hoping it can resume. If not, oh Jesus Christ, I don't wanna. I don't wanna end the stream. Oh, here we go. Reconnecting. You can do it. You can do it, old boy. Just, just a bit more. Here we go. We're back. Yeah, it's takes a second, love. It's it's the speed of light is not infinite. Yeah. Give it a second. So yeah, they don't choose. They don't decide when it's gonna happen. It just happens. Uh, wait, refreshing the chat. Oh, I, I guess it shouldn't have done that. It refreshed itself, but sure. So. It happens every four hours now. From the moment I connect, basically, in four hours it's gonna happen. All your phones do that. So every mobile phone, at least on this network, on A1 network, your IP switches every four hours. Only people don't notice it because they don't need it for things like this. But, uh, you know, I notice it because I fucking need this, you know, it not to happen. So yeah, it's... It happens every... F if you turn on your phone now in four hours, it's going to change its IP address. Every mobile operator does it differently, I guess. They can... Like, this used to be every two hours. Now it's uh, every f every four hours, which is better. But, you know, it happens nevertheless. And the only thing I can choose is I reset... So I used to reset the modem uh, at 17.59, so just one minute before 6 p.m., so that you know i would know the schedule of resetting but since i'm not playing anything online it doesn't matter now i can just it can happen we can continue the world's not gonna collapse so that's it in a nutshell am i still um do not disturb yep yeah okay so do, so we don't have those interruptions and nothing but achievements should pop up thank you john <laughs> so the sculpture yeah Okay, I'm glad I explained that better. The sculpture stared impassively, its marble beard still commanding my attention. 
I stuffed the mir mirror into its mouth. It didn't seem to be the right item for the job. Hmm, don't see any cavities. Yeah, yeah, like, you know, checking its teeth. Yeah, yeah, very funny. Now give me, f give me favorite mirror back before that thing chumps it to pieces. That's me doing an Australian accent. She lost her patience and snatched it off me. It was rather a nice mirror. I picture her gazing into it as she braided her hair. Do you want to try something else? Asked Maggle dryly. I chose... Well, we already tried smearing the lipstick on it, so that didn't work. Some dried grapes. I took a small bag of dried grapes. One by one, I fed them into the sculpture's marble maw. Munch, munch. Ugh, oh, it actually ate them. That's enough, Serge. Those are my emergency rations you're wasting. Kid snatched the bag from my hands. I still had the last grape, though, so I popped it into my mouth. It was absolutely delicious. They are not for you either, sunshine, growled, growled Kid, glaring at me. You gotta take this seriously, Serge, or should I leave you alone with Beardy here? She was clearly annoyed, but I hadn't worn her patience completely thin just yet. I decided to try something else. I chose... Well, at this... Like, at this point, I'm gonna go with the last two things, which are a sizable pet herd and the vellum scroll. We're we gonna blow it up, let's try to blow it up. Picked up the sizable pet herd. Anxiously, I shot it inside of the mouth of truth, but nothing happened. We'll let the professionals handle this, Surge. Kid, kid shoved me aside. She was holding a match. Wait, wait a second, you can't be serious. All the blood drained from my face. Deadly serious, Moit. Before I could say another word, Kid lit the fuse. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's what I chose just before you came in and that led us to the screen you saw. An explosion followed, accompanied by a puff of white smoke. When the smoke had cleared, the mouth of truth came into view once more. Still intact, but now very badly cracked indeed. Hmm, not quite enough oomph, oomph to knock its block off, eh? Should have brought a bigger one. Kid stood there with her arms folded, calmly commenting on the mayhem she just caused. <laughs> what do you think you're doing? I can't believe you just set that thing off like that. Kid shot me a look. What do you mean? What else are you gonna do with a bomb? She was a complete and utter liability. Well... Any more ideas, Serge? asked Kid breezingly. Breezily? I chose. Well, the last thing we have is a vellum scroll. I kid picked up the peculiar piece of parchment. Bracing myself, I shoved it into the mouth of truth. Ha ha ha! Nice one, Mr. Master Thief. You think it's a magic scroll or something? Kid, kid doubled over with laughter. Er, uh, guess that didn't work? With a sheepish chuckle, I pulled it out again. Oops! My hand slipped and the scroll unfurled. It was filled with strange symbols. Noticing the confused look on my face, Maggle spoke up. It's a decoding chart used for the Imperial Guard's field reports. Huh, well, it's all gibberish to me. Wouldn't be much of a cold if it wasn't, would it? Kid muttered witheringly. I was too embarrassed to reply. Once I'd clawed back some of my pride, I attempted the recovery. You'll uh, have to walk me through it sometime. She just pouted and looked away. Oh, so you can't read it either. Boy, can I pick my moments. Fine, if you're not gonna leave, take this seriously, we're leaving you behind. Sometimes she could be cold as ice. I'd really, I'd really done it now. She made to leave, but I grabbed her gently by the shoulder. Look, I'm not messing around. I'm sure this next idea is gonna work. Hmm, I'll believe it when I bloody well see it. Kid didn't seem to be, didn't seem convinced. The stakes were high. 
I looked again at her collection of knickknacks and chose. Well, that's it. We tried everything. We literally tried everything. It ate the file. Oh, she still has the file. It crunched it. Okay, the text the same. Yeah, there's nothing. Like, we tried fucking everything. Do not waste my time on this. Alright, let's just forget about it for now. So that's the same. Maybe we need a special item here. Who knows? Or maybe we need a certain order of items. The right To the right was a passage to some stairs leading upward. That's the stairs we took here. A dark passageway continued on directly ahead of where we stood. So, continue. Yes, love? I got two things to say. For one, yes, you need another item, which we don't have yet. Oh. And uh, the worst crew would be almost impossible to follow. Because okay. everyone can go there also. Yeah, it's... And, there are two things you should look out for. Your HP and his opinion of you. So we cannot fuck that up. <laughs> Wait, I have HP? That's no it's yes. nowhere shown. How do I see my HP? I don't know. I don't know. We continued along the path ahead. Okay, let's save here. We left the atrium and continued on down the path ahead. Eventually we came across an ornate door on the right hand side. Is that the same door? Yes. Something smelled fresh and pleasant. Flowers? Was it coming from inside? We went inside. Why not? Did we already do that? I don't think that's the same door. So that was upstairs. Oh. We found ourselves in a tidy, welcoming room. The knickknacks and curios dotted around the place seemed to be well loved. The stately desk and the cozy looking bed nearby, meanwhile, suggested the room's occupant was no stranger to luxury. Though the room was richly furnished, somehow it still felt awfully lonely. Kit took a quick look around before commenting. It's Lynx's girls' room. Lynx's girls' room. <laughs> girls'. <laughs> a half written letter on the desk and a teacup, still warm, suggested that the lady of the manor was still nearby. But it didn't seem that anyone was here now. We decided to search the room. Some charming flowers, a discarded cotton handkerchief, a small bottle of perfume. Nothing that meant much to me, nor anything that seemed particularly valuable. They're, they're walking there. Yeah, you can see them. That's wonderful. Kids seem to have the same impression. And scanned the room clearly, not expecting to fight anything. Wait, I want to see Serge. Come back. Oh, they're gone. The only item of note was a small antique box which bore a crest resembling a viper. Oh, there we go. I decided where to look next. Open the chest of drawers? Nobody mentioned that. Well, Pick up the little box. Picked up the small wooden box on the bookshelf. I gently opened the lid and was greeted by a soothing melody. A music box? There was something about that song. Hey! I know this song. There is something about that song, isn't it? What, which melody is this? Oh! That's the, that's the world map music from Chrono Cross. I forgot the name of it. It's not Chronomantique, it's... I guess just Homeworld theme, I think. Wait, that's the Unstolen Jewel melody from the ending as well. That's from the ending of Chrono Cross, that's the Unstolen Jewel, the beautiful song. But also the game over. It's several songs from Chrono Cross. Cool. Didn't expect that. 
I know this tune. Kid was standing next to me, and I could see something had changed in her expression. You do, huh, kid? Someone used to sing it to me a long time ago. She turned her, turned her gaze downward and went silent. Kid? Startled, she turned to me. Her eyelashes glistened as if wet with dew. She walked to the door not saying a word. Hey, kid, wait up. We left the room. Was she crying? Was kid crying? Maybe I was just seeing things. I mean, it's a girl. Teenage girl, but yeah. She's supposed to be a badass. Sure. The passage outside the room continued to our left and right. Damn, I wish I'd checked the drawers. The path to the right led deeper into the darkness of the manor. Meanwhile, going left would take us to the atrium and another branch. Let's go left towards the atrium. No, wait, uh, let's go. Oh, you want to go towards the atrium? Because the atrium is where the piranhas are. Yeah, we, okay, we're not ready for that. So we're going to go to the right. We went down the dark passageway, eventually finding ourselves at a sturdy looking, immaculately polished door. So all the doors looked the same. Kid sniffed the air, sniffed at the air. Just as I thought, something stinks here. I reckon we've found the beast's lair, lads. In the darkness, Kid's lips twisted into a grin that turned my blood cold. We went inside. Yeah, let's save. We might die. Also, the kid has been fed and... Uh, nice. Thanks, love. Kid opened the door and slipped inside. So, did she sniff Lynx out? You recognize the melody? The Viper Manor, again from Chrono Cross. Well, I mean, not from Chrono Cross. Obviously, it's from here. So, even uh, even a good portion of this si soundtrack was carried over to Chrono Cross. I love that. <clears throat> How was the Super Nintendo even able to make sounds like these? You recognize it, huh? You love this. Sasha loves it. Mwah. Kid opened the door, okay. It was Lynx's room, but he didn't seem to be around. Heh, <laughs> the bugger's gone and scarpered cause he heard I was coming. There was something deeply unpleasant about the room. There wasn't anything unusual about the furniture and fittings. Not how they looked or how they were made, but taken as a whole, it all felt discordant. Was this a reflection of Lynx? A seemingly ordinary facade that hid a disturbing truth only some could see? Let's see what we can find. The desk drawers, the paintings on the wall, the vase on top of the side table. We left no stone unturned. There didn't seem to be anything suspicious. But as I scanned the room something unusual caught my eye. And you know how painful that can be. <laughs> There was a pedestal in one corner with a significant looking scarlet cloth drawn over it. I slowly raised my hand toward it. Be careful what you touch in here, warned Maggle. I pulled my hand back timidly. Wait, that's very familiar. But then the cloth flipped back with a flutter without me having laid a finger on it. Did that thing just move by itself? exclaimed Kid, her eyes wide open with surprise. Gripped by curiosity, we moved in to see what it had been hiding. It was a large antique mirror of an elaborately decorated style I'd seen before. It wasn't the kind of thing that would normally seem out of place in an old manor like this. And yet... Wait, something ain't right, said Kid. Meanwhile, I was captivated by the gaze of the statue of Venus reflected in the mirror. Sure. Holy shit, that was creepy. Uh. Suddenly, the eyes of the statue shone with light. Wait, you promised this isn't gonna be a ghost story. <laughs> did Lubica see that? A bit? Uh, I, I I'm not sure if she saw that. I think she did. That oh my god, it's... Uh, nah, nah. 
What is your desire? It spoke with a voice that was crystal clear, yet smoky and husky. The, the mirror, it's speaking, I stammered. Ah, a whispering mirror, muttered Magal, as if he'd seen them a thousand times before. What's one of those? Kid gave Magal a quizzical glance. A magical mirror in which a spirit dwells. The spirit can freely move between its own and other mirrors and will share its wisdom with those who ask. Oh my god! I think we gotta capture this spirit in our little silver mirror. That's just me guessing here. <clears throat> uh, when we, we were checking a, a room and then Serge said, you know, it looked at me. Probably not. No, it looked at me. Nah, it didn't. It was just looking like that. This isn't gonna turn into some dumb ghost story. Probably, I think. <laughs> that part. I don't know if you were there for that. Perhaps we should ask it something. I decided to ask it about something that had been on my mind for some time. I asked about Kid. I want to know about Kid's past. Not if you want to leave this place alive, you bloody don't. Kid's face turned red with anger. Your, your wish is my command, responded the mirror, ignoring Kid, who had grabbed me by the collar and was complain, complaining vociferously. What the fuck is that word? Vociferously? Jesus Christ. Vociferous. Vociferous, expressing or characterized by vehement, vehement opinions, loud and forceful. What the fuck is vehement? It's like word in a word. Showing strong feeling, forceful, passionate or intense. So expressing or characterized by strong, passionate opinions, loud and forceful. Okay, it's an interesting word, if I remember it. Vociferous. Vociferous. The image in my mirror rippled, and the reflection in the mirror, not my mirror, and the reflection of the statue shook, and then the mirror's surface grew dark. Yeah, that's the girl who stored the stars, that's Kid's team. Holy shit, this is wonderful. I didn't, I didn't know what to expect from this game, but I'm glad I picked it up, because this shit is tight, man. I don't know why I said that, I watched too much Ryan George last night, but yeah. <laughs> Playing, what are they called again, a text adventure, it's called... What is it called, damn it? A visual novel. Playing visual novel games is tight. Nah, nah. So I love this melody. I adore it. You'll see when it plays in Chrono Cross, it reminds me of that. Like it instantly brings me back to the, to when I played this game. I not Chrono Cross. I mean, 2011, the summer of 2011. Just so many memories are stuck in my head because, well, that's the summer I played for the first time ever Final Fantasy X, Chrono Cross, Final Fantasy X 2, and Final Fantasy 12. It was a magical summer for me, and I had a, an, an honest to god vacation. So what did I do the entire vacation? I sat in front of my PlayStation 2. And, uh, well, yeah, because it played both PS1 and PS2 games and played these games. I had them for, some of them for a short while, so I wanted to make sure I, you know, <laughs> I played, I play every second of them and Chrono Cross was among them. So it brings me back to that time. I spent so much time in front of the TV that summer that my then girlfriend and my friend, Chirko <laughs> forced me to go to beer fest. They were like, "You gotta, you gotta get out, man. This is lovely. You love these games. We've all been nice to you, but shit, you haven't been outside for two weeks. You gotta get out." So <laughs> that was the last beer fest I think I had fun with. But yeah, so I guess Sasha doesn't want me talking. That's what Chrono means to me. Well, that and a lot more. But yeah. Yeah, it's true, Lyubka, but I, I swear, in Chrono 
cross. Surge is like Chrono. He never speaks. He doesn't even... He doesn't do anything. Like I said... Yeah, but this is the yeah he, he's narrating here, so I gotta... I gotta... I guess it kind of makes sense. I don't know, sis. I haven't been to Beer Fest in years. Like, the yeah, last... That's, that's my fault. Not your fault. The last time I went of my own will was 2012. And then... The... After that, I went, what, what was it, like 2018 or 2017 or 18, when Anna and her friends, what were their names that go together, Lila and Mina, went, uh, so we, like, they, they invited me, I went with them, but I, I already felt like I'm too old for this shit. <laughs> I don't know, if the family goes, if friends go, I might, who knows. So, the... The, the image in the mirror rippled and the reflection of the statue. So we sh we asked, the, it's a magical mirror that tells the truth. That it, you know that, you know that, but like, uh, Serge, I, I had the choice to ask about Maggles or Kids Past. I asked about kids, she complained, but the mirror ignored her and is still speaking. This is like playing Dungeons and Dragons, kind of. Yeah, yeah. I would love to sit in silence and play this by myself. Really? Why don't you? You have the, the Xbox, the controller? I didn't know it was going to be like this. Really? Yeah, I thought there, there, there was going to be like a picture of that doing stuff, like, like first Final Fantasy kind of. Like, uh, like, no, no, no. It's... The text, you know, it's going to be like in, in uh, Pokemon, <laughs> the lower half. I don't know. Yeah. So yeah, feel free to play it. I would love, love this. it. Especially, I love it because it has so many outcomes. So John says he never even came across the statue, which is yeah. So you can totally miss things. Oh. It's kind of harder. It's, it's that's why visual novels are an evolution of text-based adventures, right? From the 70s and 80s. And my uh, my issue with that is so like in a video game, normal video game, you have a map. You open the map, you see where you are. If the game has a map, if not, you still like visually can tell where you are. Unless you're in the Lost Woods in Hyrule, but that's another story. But here, you're reading this, you gotta memorize where you've been, what you've seen. I guess it would be good for me to practice to play this. It's not that I don't like it. Uh, I've got a uh, nice game. I uh, can't recommend it. Like, it looks like this. I'm sure you'll remember it. Yeah. Uh, Le the this style of game. Yeah, Sasha plays a lot of these games, and I always think that those are not real games. Real games, you know, <laughs> have... They're different. I'm not gonna go into details, but you know, I probably wouldn't even play this if it weren't a Chrono game. But here we are. I already like it, and um, yeah, the the girl that stole the stars just keeps playing it. Just in the fields, man. <laughs> and then the mirror's surface grew dark. The blackness gave away to a scene in Rijora. Shadowy figures appeared one by one. There was a young woman surrounded by several children. Oh my fucking god, that's Luca, isn't, isn't it? They were all dirty, their clothes ragged and worn, but they all laughed as they played together. And then the scene was drowned in flames, and a troop of armed men appeared. Yep, that's so we're gonna see this in details in Chrono Cross. I'm pretty sure this is what they're talking about. Luca from Chrono Trigger founded uh, an orphanage. Oh yeah, spoilers. <laughs> Cat hair on screen. And... Uh, Kid was raised there, and if you remember, Kid is a clone of Shala, kind of, that Shala sent across space and time, and Luca adopted her, so that's like the least I can say about that. Oh, you brushed her, she's so... Yeah, I know, but it's different when I see it. Yeah, you did. She's wonderful. Uh, that's the... That's the cat, and she does the, uh, the grass like licking. Lick. Now you can lick yourself on me without like shedding your hair. Sit down, kitty. Mat. Mat, come on. Yes. I keep forgetting she, she doesn't understand English. Really? Why well, you brushed her? Oh, wonderful. So now she knows what it is. Eating with urgency and cuddling with urgency. She's beautiful. Calm down, kitty. I mean, rest well, I guess that's what I'm trying to say. Sit down. Shut up. 
Yeah, it is. A, you know, Chrono Cross is the deepest story I've ever... That's it, There's a reason why Chrono Cross is my favorite game of all time. It's fucking convoluted. The plot is so complex that if you don't like that kind of stuff, you're gonna hate the game. Because, like, do you found out, find out a thing, then that thing is connected to a thing that you find out about, and the, both things are connected to another thing, and all that together is connected to Chrono Trigger in a way that... So, a lot of people who played Chrono Cross didn't... They didn't see it as a sequel to Chrono Trigger but a lot of people said I read like on all uh, message boards and forums from the early 2000s 2000 2001 2 when people played that game they you know the, the consensus was you know this this is not really a sequel to Chrono Trigger it's its own story it just has the name Chrono and I'm glad I didn't listen to that before I played the game I was like I still want to try it I love the intro the intro to Chrono Cross bought me really and the music and the visuals and I was like what the fuck flying dragons and shit what is this and the music just immediately I was like I want I need to play this game this is, I, I just gotta and then I started the game at Miha's home because he had my PlayStation was uh, in, in, in shop and uh, and it looked nice it reminded me of Final Fantasy 8 it has the same gameplay style where you have three characters that actually you can see on the screen unlike in many JRPGs where you lead the main character and uh, and I liked it so I you know I brought the game home and me has PS because mine was still at the shop and started again and it started differently and that's when you know that's where it I was like wait a minute today when I started this in Miha's place so you start the game with Surge, Kid and another character and when I started again it was a, the third character was different it wasn't you know the guy who I started with so I was like, you know, I just started the game, let me reset the console, start again. I started with another character, like a third character right now. And then I realized, holy shit, this game, it's gotta, it's gonna give me something I like, because... How many characters are there? Just, so I just quick glance on the, on the internet, the Google of 2011. It was, it said, uh, Chrono Cross has something like 50 playable characters that blew my, blew my mind. I was like, either this is gonna be very heavy and you know boring with so many characters it's gonna be wonderful so I sat down to play it and I didn't stop really for like two months I didn't stop like every day after work I would come uh, I came back from work at like midnight 1 a.m. so I would play till 2 3 a.m. Uh, as long as I yeah that, I was young back then love I used to stay up <laughs> I used to wake up at 4 p.m. so yeah and uh, <laughs> She can't imagine that now because now nowadays I wake up at like 6 a.m. I'm like, oh shit, we gotta do stuff. <laughs> and I would stay up every night. And if I worked a uh, morning shift, I would uh, stay. As soon as I get, came back from work, I would hastily eat and jump back on Chrono Cross. It was a wonderful time. Which I digress heavily, but it's connected to what I'm I'm uh, uh, I'm saying here. And this melody actually brings me back to the time, so I can remember it more clearly than usual yeah once I was a young boy <laughs> well a long time ago I was a young boy um, but yeah it's shit man so yeah it's I it, it's gonna take more than a session maybe even three if I keep on like this but no regrets this is I'm sharing this with you guys <laughs> so yeah back to the story Truth of our man, I think that's the Acacia Dragoons that links Trink to work for him. Like, it's still mind blowing that they made. So it's Yasunori Mitsuda. He's the composer of Chrono Cross, Chrono Trigger, and Chrono Cross. And when you hear, so if you think this is great music, this is like the Super Nintendo quality of the great music. Imagine this. Like you can't even imagine it, sister. When we start Chrono Cross, tears are gonna flow from many faces. I think. <laughs> Not just mine this time, for many faces. You're getting back to yeah, I know, it's, this is big for me. And then you remember something and like, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I just love it. It's John knows what I'm talking about. He felt it, I'm sure. And John's like, what? what? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, the music in Chrono Cross, in short, sis, it's gonna be better than Trigger and... Radical Dreamers and Final Fantasy combined. It's just the best. I feel it all the time in my loins. 
<laughs> Imagine that said with John's voice. Let's get out of this music, it's really making me nostalgic. <laughs> and then the scene was drowned in flames and a troop of armed men appeared. The men dragged the woman away and the children vanished one by one into the inferno. The focus shifted to one of the children, a girl. She was standing with her back to the flames, her tears leaving tracks through the suit on her face as she, sh she howled at the night sky. The girl's right eye was narrow like a cat's. Stop it! Kids screamed. The image in the mirror grew faint. Kids stared at the ground, her hands balled into tight fists. The room was dominated by silence. Worried about her, I broke the silence. Kid, I, I'm sorry, I... I'm leaving. She spun on her heel and made for the door. Wait, I cried and sheepishly darted after her. Why do we have that kind of relationship with her? I don't know. That doggy kind of relationship. I don't know, this is new to me. The corridor stretched out beyond the door. But I want to know about Maggles. Okay, let's not. Let's not do that. Yeah. Eventually we came across an ornate door to the left hand side. It was Riddle's room, Lynx's daughter. She's in Chrono Cross as well. She can become a playable character. He's got kids? I thought he was 12 as well. She's not his daughter, though. Wait, of who? Course. Lynx? Yeah. No, Lynx? Yeah, yeah. They, I, I expect them all to be too young. Lynx, in truth, is Serge's dad, who was turned yes, into a Lynx. So he's old. He's like 50 at least. Uh... He... Can't have a teenager when he's a teenager. Well. <laughs> so should we get into her room or go on our way? Also, she's not his daughter in in well, well, Yeah. On the other hand, that's what I expect. Okay. Uh, yeah, of course we want to go in. Cause you can remember what Magal said. Everything else is secondary. What what? What else? We found ourselves in a tidy, welcoming room. The knickknacks and curious. Well, is that the same room? Yes. Uh, now we know who the occupant is. Who's lonely? Uh. Wait. Oh, a half-written letter on the desk and a teacup still warm. Yeah. A window was slightly ajar, bringing. Wait, is is that the same room? Yes. yes, yes. What did you want to say? Nope, it's not. Did you see that? Yeah. Seemed that someone had been here only moments ago. Let's come back later. We left Riddle's room for now. So what about her? I just know she's a playable character and you can meet her. I didn't obtain all the characters in my one playthrough. The passage outside the room continued to our left and right. Going right would take us to Lynx's room. Meanwhile, going left would take us to the atrium and another branch. I guess we gotta go there. Kid stopped in her track, signaling us with a hand behind her back. She drew her knife and stared into the darkness. We heard the clinking of metal from just up ahead. Goblin guards. It wasn't like likely there'd be Anyone else going for a nighttime stroll around the matter wearing armor? I suggested a tactical retreat or drew my knife and readied myself. I picked. You can't save at this point. Here we go. Posture's good. Yep. Stretchity stretch. Oh, crackity crack. <laughs> Don't worry, love. Ah. Thank the fifth. I picked up on the situation pretty quickly and drew my knife, preparing for a fight. Kid gave me a sideways glance. You know something? You're starting to look like a real thief. Now you just need to walk the walk, she grinned. Oh, I'm really... I'm reading a lot of stuff. Yeah, I can't read with my mouth full, definitely. <laughs> oh, 
All right, Serge, Magil, let's get him. Kid leapt forward, confident as ever. It was like she thought nothing could go wrong. We have fucking goblins here. That's not a thing in Trigger or Cross. There was five of them in total. The one army goblins having been looked after in the been well looked after in this palatial manner, they'd grown to be even bigger than Magal. Oh wow. Each of them was carrying the manor goblin's trademark. A morning star consisting of a rod and a heavy spiked iron ball on a chain. Which is what a morning star is, isn't it? Wait, or is it a flail? I never could remember. And it didn't have time to think much more about it. I think it is a flail. Morning star has doesn't have a chain. It's on grip, I think. Uh, I knew that when I played. What? Yeah, but this one has a chain, so it is a flail. Because you gotta flail it around. <laughs> I love Serge's uh, personality here. A goblin came rushing at me, swinging in spite. I met the charge with my knife and jumped back to evade. The iron ball crashed into the stone tile I was standing on only moments before, crushing it. Had I tried to stop it with my knife, I would have been lucky to escape with a fractured skull. Goblin's chest. Seized the opportunity and tried to thrust my knife into the goblin's chest. Only to stab it squarely in the gut. I rushed to pull it out, but before I could, the creature had grabbed my arm in its meaty fist. I looked up to see it glaring at me with a mad grin on its face. Its fangs dripped with saliva. Magal? I decided to fight dirty. The goblin may have been a monster, but I guess it was still a man, in a sense. Oh, no. I swung my no. foot up hard. Oh, I kicked him in the nuts. Oh, jeez, that's fighting dirty. Oh. I thought it was like, a brutal kick right in the family jewels. But it had no effect. The creature's grip didn't weaken and its grin didn't waver. Actually, I think I hurt my foot more than anything else. <laughs> oh my god, this game is great. I got balls of steel. Eh? I got balls of steel. Suddenly, I was flung to the side. My back crashed into the wall, the impact knocking the wind out of me. And then, before I could react, a heavy kick smashed into my side. I was sent flying, slamming into the ground and rolling from the impact. I coughed, leaving the spatter of blood on the floor. And then, with a roar, the goblin started running for me. I stood up, trying to ignore the ringing in my head. The goblin was unarmed. Unharmed. It was going to strike first. I read it myself. Oh, unarmed. I actually read it right the first time. I swung at, it swung at me with a left fist aimed right at my face. I timed my dodge carefully, ducking at the last second. The fist sailed through empty air. I slipped past, circling around to the goblin's back and freed the mace from its belt. I lifted the weighty weapon in the air as the creature turned then brought it down on its head with all the strength I could muster. There was a sickening crunch followed by a squelch at the mace as the mace came free. The goblin collapsed. Shit, I just killed it with a mace in the head. I threw the mace to the ground and dropped to my knees. Exhausted, I panted for breath. Finally a notch in finally a notch in your belt, eh? taunted kid coming to my side. I wanted to say something, but I was too exhausted. Phew, okay, we're done with that. I was starting to feel a little worse for wear. Still can't say. I was going to have to be more careful from now on, or this was going to end badly. Maybe you ain't such a drongo after all. Just goes to show, any old weirdo can make something of themselves if they've put their mind into it. Kid's eyes glinted with mischief. We continued down the corridor until we reached an intersection. This is where Hippie saved the game, just to make sure he actually did it. It's okay, John. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna end the stream shortly, but tomorrow tomorrow you know hey we have no class, love, right? So you can expect a, sh a longer session tomorrow. 
and maybe we even finish the game. We will. We're just going to the city for the morning. We're, Never we're, say we're gonna finish the game. <laughs> please, I don't want to spend. I don't want to end up in Belgrade at 6 p.m. again because yeah. that's unpleasant and yeah. smelly. Yeah. The city stinks. We continue down the Koya. Read that. There was a left turn in the corridor leading to some stairs going upward. The corridor also continued straight on toward the entrance to a large plaza-like atrium. I guess we're going to go up, because atrium is where the piranhas are. Piranodons, I'm sorry. Folded the laundry while I watch. Wasn't bragging about it. <laughs> I miss you too, John. It's like... I don't even get to watch streams working from morning to evening and driving lessons as well. Oh yeah, so I have one this Thursday and then two classes on Thursday and two next week someday. I still don't know when. And after that, it's done with the theoretical part. So then I got to do the exam and theoretical part. well, that's what they call it. Yeah. And then we go on to the practical part, which is actually learning to drive physically. Uh, which I have no idea when it's going to be. So I'm going to use the time in between to stream as much as possible. Um, I've also applied for some... I, I should have mentioned this, like I should give updates at the start of stream. So I'll do that tomorrow before I start the stream. But uh, in short, uh, I... Uh, how do you even say that? I want to I want to get the fourth degree of my high school. So I have the third degree. Over here, you can have three or four degrees. Um third degree <laughs> yeah third degree burn uh you can have three three or four year high schools mine is like some high schools you can finish three years and never finish the fourth one but you have like a lower degree so basically i have one more exam to finish my fourth degree which i haven't been working on since we moved to bali it's like three years ago and uh, i'm also going to be doing that this summer so there's a lot of studying but with you know with careful planning and a lot of hard work should be able to stream more than I did the last month that's like a tiny update for me so back to the passageway the passage of, to the stairway was short kid with kid leading the way we started to climb the narrow staircase I love the animations here like I can't believe this was on Super Nintendo fuck's sake I, I would love to what's up with the third degree well nothing what did you say, love? I would love to have seen it on Super Nintendo. Imagine that, yeah. yeah. Wow. We should have been born in Japan, really. They, they get the best yeah. gaming stuff. They had the fucking satellite view. You could just, like, s satellite dish download your game and save it on a cart. It's just mind-blowing. At the top we found another intersection. Taking the corridor to the right would lead us to a dead end with a large door, while the way to the left led to the terrace. The narrow side passage in front of us was open. Side passage, maybe? We headed down the side passage. At the end of it, we came to an old, immaculately polished door. Have we been there yeah, I th oh no, that's not it. We went inside. Kid gently pushed the door ajar and peeked into the room. The next thing I knew, she'd slipped inside. Megal and I followed. Looks like a study. Ooh, that's where Balthazar should be. The room was lit by the moonlight coming through the long slender windows, slanting down in pale beams through the darkness. Beam, beam, beam. I love the bass of this track. Doom. Doom, doom, doom. That part. It was pretty big for a study with an immaculate antique desk dominating the center. I just can't believe I'm listening to this. This is fucking Super Nintendo. We need to stream more Super Nintendo games. I think we only stream like... You know what I... What I... Super Mario World, yeah. Okay. We will. And Super Mario World 2. I, I, I so want to get that game that sometimes I'd be like, take my house, just give me Yoshi's Island. I want Yoshi's Island. Oh, 
There were rows of bookshelves lined with thick, dusty old tomes. The wall to the rear of the room was decorated with paintings and shelves of vases or vases? Vase or vase? It's like different regions? Vase or vase. Okay. Shelves of vases and paint plates. Painted plates stood before it. They all seemed to be curious from foreign curios from foreign lands. Fuck, go straight for the desk. I went over to the desk and started searching the drawers. There I found a neatly arranged set of pens, ink, bottles, and other writing materials. Nothing of, in nothing of interest, in other words. A small portrait on the desk caught my eye. There was a picture of a young girl with a gentle smile on her lips. Who was she? That's the girl Lynx adopted. If you ask me, it wasn't cause she was looking to help the needy, said Kid peering over my shoulder. She wrinkled her nose in distaste. Hmm, not even a looker. Suddenly, there was a knock at the door. It wasn't a loud knock, but in the bottomless silence of the night, it might as well have been a thunderclap. Kid and I stood bolt upright and turned toward it. Maggle, meanwhile, hid in the shadows, drifting away like smoke. Panicked, I whispered to Kid. Behind the door in the shadows? Behind the door in the shadows. Quick, get behind the door! We kept our bodies low as we silently and swiftly made for the back of the door, where the shadows would keep us hidden. We pressed our backs to the wall and did our best to still our breathing. Slowly the door opened. Look at how, like, it moves. Yeah. Like the dust in the night. Flickering candlelight spread from the doorway with a warm glow. I held my breath. I also saved my game because I wasn't sure when I did that last time. But it seemed that whoever it was didn't mean to come in. They simply stood there. Strange. I thought I heard something. But the lord of the manor is away, of course. Why would there be anyone in here? I have to get over my nerves. Everything was fine until we heard the news that Poor was on the move. So, do you remember Poor? Yeah. Poor was the nation in the, in the uh, south of the western... Sorry? Nation? Yeah, nation in the south of the western continent. That's the, that's the country where uh, we had the mayor who was greedy and we had to change his destiny. So that's our... Yes, Poor's army. Don't kill your family. Why would you kill your family? <laughs> that was just out of the blue. The figure quietly closed the door, plunging the room back into darkness. The voice trailed off to a whisper. We remained mo motionless, keeping our ears pricked for any sign of an, of an un unwelcome return. All we heard... That's wonderful. All we heard were footsteps moving away. It kind of makes me wonder why Viper Manor wasn't the bigger section in Chrono Cross. This, is, this shit is fucking gold, man. All we heard were footsteps moving away. So poor has made its move. Magil, Magil emerged from shadows contemplating the news we'd overheard. Kid, if the rumors are true, we might well be about to find ourselves in a very difficult situation. This seemed to set her thinking too. So this is important because in Chrono Cross, there are two dimensions, two parallel worlds. In one of them, poor invaded uh, yeah, the archipelago. But we'll get to that. They're annoying me. I missed something because of them. <laughs> they want attention. Poor was a powerful nation that ruled the southern continent. I'd heard it was a prosperous land whose recent and sudden development had pushed it far ahead of its neighbors. Which made me wonder... What would its inhabitants want here, out in the sticks? So it's, again, it's important because after we save the future in Chrono Trigger, things, you know, there's no apocalypse in 1999, but something changes, so poor becomes dominant. 
if I remember correctly, would happen anyway. Only, like in the future, the future in uh, the future in Chrono Trigger during the game is fucked up, you know, because lava erupted and just destroyed shit everywhere. But we changed that. Now I'm not clear, hundred percent clear on uh, where it went after that. After we save the future, it still should be like. 1999 is the year of the apocalypse, right? And Chrono Trigger's present is the year 1000. While Chrono Cross is set in a little around 1020, like a year 1020. So I'm just throwing things I know here to, to try to make it clearer for people who have never seen this. But yeah, not even I am totally clear what's happening. But yeah, well, why is poor invading? They couldn't be after the frozen flame too, could they? As valuable as it might be, a jewel was just a jewel in the grand scheme of things. I couldn't imagine it being an item of national interest. I mean, ultimately, it was just a pretty rock, right? Hmm. Let them do what they want. If everyone's busy playing soldiers, they won't be bothering us. Come on, we got things to do, she headed for the door. We left the room and made our way back down the side passage. Leading from the study. Okay, let's save here. Alright guys, I'm gonna end it here. I got things to do. Two hours, almost exactly. That's wonderful. A little shorter stream than usual, but still. I made it. Almost didn't make it. When I heard Sasha's gonna have a class, I was like, let's cancel it. Thanks for being here, John. Hold on, let's see who we're gonna raid, if we're gonna raid anyone. Thank you, John. It's interesting, I didn't know the level of, you know, how different pl our playthroughs may, may be, but when you said you didn't even come across the Statue of Truth, I wonder which things I'll miss that you didn't miss. How do you like the game, sis? Like, considering it's vastly different from anything I normally play. Raid channel. Doity. Ask Doity, he's playing retro. Let's, let's raid Doity. Star raid. Whoop. Our sister Doity. I'm just... I'm at, in the meantime, until tomorrow, I'll try to practice my Australian accent. I'm going to listen to some Australians speak. I don't know. I like accents. I like making voices. So why not? Why, why not? If I want to do a good kid impression, why wouldn't I do that? <laughs> so tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow, John. Tomorrow, normal time. What's that for you? Minus 7. That's 11 a.m. your time. So that's when we're gonna start. Might even start a little earlier. Just all depends when I finish work, but I'll notify you on Discord. Thanks everyone for watching. Thank you, sis. Uh, thank you, John. Thank Everyone you. else in the background there. Uh, Sexy Weski, he's sleeping. Bye. And uh, Simon was there too. So I'll see you guys tomorrow. We'll continue this, maybe even finish it. I don't know how far in I am. We're doing this slowly as I do, but uh, we're having fun. That's the way we do things around these parts. So before the raid happens by itself, be well, everyone, and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye!